Welcome to Electra Online. Here's our second example of how to do a truss problem. It's a little bit more complicated, not much. It now has an additional member in the vertical direction, which causes these members, this single member, to be now split up into two members. Let's determine which of these members are under compression and which ones are under tension. Notice we have a 5,000 Newton load force pulling down here on this member, which means that force gets transferred to the joint up here. That means that this member here is under tension. This member is pulling on that joint. This is being pulled down here. That member is under tension. So let's mark it down. Tension. Notice that the force is then transferred to this joint. This joint is being pulled down. But since these have two connections right here, those two members that are slanted have connections here, preventing this member from sliding out. If those connections weren't there, these members would slide out, which means these connections here, these pins are holding these two members from sliding. That means these two members must be under compression. And finally, you can see that these two members are pushing in this direction, pushing on these two members right here. That means that this member must be under tension and this member must be under tension as well. Next, we're trying to determine the support forces F sub C and F sub A. Realizing that the truss is a singular solid structure, we can then use the sum of all the torques. About point A must add up to zero. Notice we have a 5,000 Newton force giving us a clockwise torque. Clockwise is a negative torque. That's equal to minus 5,000 Newtons. Multiply times this distance. Hmm, but we don't know that distance yet. We do know that this member is 10 meters long. This angle is 30 degrees. That angle is 45 degrees, which means that this length right here, this member from D to C, must be 8.66 meters. Where do we find that? It is 10 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0.866. This distance, therefore, is 8.66 meters. This distance here, that's the opposite side to 30. That's 10 meters times the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. That makes this member 5 meters in height. Since this is 45 degrees, degree angle, that this must also be 5 meters. And that means that this member here, if this is 5 meters and this is 5 meters, then this must be 7.07 .07 meters. It is 20, it's the square root of 25 plus 25. The square root of 50 is 7.07 .07 meters for the length of this member. Now that we know the lengths, we know the moment arm of this torque. That would be 5 meters. And then plus, we have F sub C pushing in this direction that will give us a positive torque in a clockwise direction. Multiply times the distance of 13.66 meters. I don't want to write down the meters. It's cleaner that way. We could then say that F sub C is equal to 5,000 newtons times 5 and divided by the coefficient here 13.66 which is equal to 25,000 divided by 13.66 equals 1,830 newtons. That's the force here, 1,830 newtons, which we can then use to find the force at A. We know that the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. We have a negative 5,000 newtons a positive F sub C, which is 1830 newtons, and a positive F sub A, which means that F sub A is 5000 minus 830, or F sub A is equal to 3170 newtons. 3170 newtons. Together, this plus this should add up to 5000, and it does. Now we're ready to try and determine the tensions and compressions on the members of the truss. Let's start with this joint right here. Before we do that, we do need to know the directions of the forces on each of the members. If it's under compression, that means it's being pushed up from both directions, which means the member pushes back. The member then applies a force on this joint in that direction, applies a force on this joint 
in this direction, same with this member right here, a force in this direction, a force in this direction. This member is under tension, that means it pulls on that joint in this direction, it pulls on the joint in this direction, and since these two members are under tension, this member pulls in this direction, this member pulls in this direction, same here, this member pulls in this direction, this member pulls in that direction. So now we have identified all of the forces acting all the members. We can now go ahead and take this first joint right here. We can then draw all the forces. We have one force in this direction, that's F sub C, 1830 newtons. We have one force in this direction, one force in that direction. Let's draw this force like this. This is the compression force between B and C. And then we have the tension force between uh, this is C and D, and it pulls in this direction. This is CD. This is a 30 degree angle. This is a 60 degree angle. And this is a right angle right there. Now we can use the law of sines. We can write that 1830 newtons divided by the sine of the angle directly across there, that's the sine of 30 degrees, is equal to BC divided by the sine of the angle directly across, which is a 90 degree angle, which is equal to CD divided by the sine of the angle directly across the sine of 60 degrees. That allows us to find BC and CD. BC would be a compression force and CD would be a tension force. BC is equal to 1830 newtons divided by the sine of 30 degrees times the sine of 90 degrees, which of course is 1. The sine of 30, that would be 0.5. It looks like that probably double that, right? Divided by 30, take the sine, double that, that would be 3,000. 660 newtons. For CD, this is equal to 1830 newtons divided by the sine of 30 degrees and we multiply times the sine of 60 degrees. That would be 3660 times the sine of 60. 3660 times 60, the sine of that, equals 3170 newtons. Now we have the member BC and we have the member CD. So we have that member and this member. Now we can move up to this joint up here. But maybe before we do that, let's determine the tension in this beam right here. What if I look at this joint? Notice the tension in beam from A to D must equal the tension in the beam from D to C, otherwise we don't have the force in the x direction to be equal to zero. And the same here, we can say that the force in the y direction must add up to zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction, and that's on four on joint D, must equal zero, which means the negative 5,000 newtons must equal, oop, plus, I'm getting ahead of myself, plus the tension over here, which is the tension from B to D, and those must equal zero, which means that the tension in B to D must equal 5,000 newtons. Now we're ready to go to this joint right here, because now we know the tension here. We also know the tension there to determine the tension from A to B, or I should say the compression from A to B. Let's draw an arrow. We're going to take this joint and look at it over here. We have the 5,000 Newton force pulling from the, at the pin at the, at the top in this direction, 5,000 Newtons. We have this force coming in this way. This is from B to C at a 30 degree angle, kind of like this. It's from B to C. And we have the force from a to, B, to A to B in this direction. Now let's get the angles. If this is from A to B, that means the angle relative to the horizontal is 45 degrees, which means that this angle must also be 45 degrees. The angle over here, notice that this angle is 30, it means this angle must be 30, so 
So this is 30, that means that this angle must be 60 degrees, and this is 180 minus 105 or 75 degrees. Again, using the law of sines, notice though that BC is already a known quantity. BC is equal to 3,660 newtons, which means we only need to find AB here. 5,000 newtons divided by the sine of 75 degrees is equal to AB divided by the sine of 60 degrees. And we already know BC, so we don't need to calculate that. AB is equal to 5,000 newtons divided by the sine of 75 degrees times the sine of 60 degrees. 5,000 divided by the sine of 75 times the sine of 60, 4,483 newtons. That gives us A to B. That's known, this is known, this is known, this is known because we know that this here is BD, and BD is known as well. And do we know AD, and that's true, AD must equal D to C, since AD is equal to D to C, and D to C is equal to 3,170 newtons. That means A to D must equal that as well. And so now we've determined all of the forces and all the members, and we have also found the support forces. Notice the technique. First, make sure you know the dimensions of all the members, make sure you know all the angles, then determine which ones are, are under compression and tension. Draw the arrows on each member that shows you how they interact with the pins, with the connections. Then draw at each corner or at each connection Draw the forces as a sum of all the forces. If there's only three forces there, you can then use the law of signs to find the individual forces of all the, all the members connected to that joint. If there's more than three forces, well, I'll show you that example on one of the next videos, then you have to solve by using the sum of all the forces in the x direction, the sum of all the forces in the y direction technique, but I'll show you how to do that. But here you have a nice example of how to take care of a simple truss problem. Now there's actually a different method you can use here and on the next video I'm going to show you how to apply a slightly different method to get the exact same results. So stay tuned and see how it's done in that case.